The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted existing inequalities and underlined the need for a radical transformation of how we live on the Earth and our relationship to it. We need a recovery from the pandemic that centers people, communities, our health, and the planet's health. But more than that, we need to fundamentally rethink what it means to live in harmony with the world and tread gently in our time on it. First, let's talk about emissions. The fossil fuel industry talks about net zero a lot, but this is not enough. This is often a convenient term used to greenwash business as usual. To keep global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius, coal, oil and gas needs to stay in the ground. Reaching net zero by 2050 is not bold enough action. What we need is real zero, which will involve rapid and far-reaching transitions in the way we organize our energy systems, our economies, and our politics. There are many avenues through which we can reduce our emissions, not just through energy, but through revolutions in transport, industry, waste management, forest protection, and agriculture. Some of the communities which are bearing the most extreme burdens of climate impacts are in fact the ones who are leading the way with real solutions. Bangladesh is one of the most climate vulnerable countries in the world, but it demonstrates the viability of community-led solutions involving decentralized renewable energy. With solar energy systems, they are proving that community-owned decarbonization is not only possible, but beneficial. In Suluan in the Philippines, the small island community has established a community initiative to enhance energy democracy and accessibility through a community-led development plan that includes the establishment of a hybrid solar mini-grid. The community aims to be a leader in the region for renewable energy initiatives. A mosque in Jakarta, Indonesia's capital city, is demonstrating climate leadership and forward-thinking renewable energy use through the installation of solar panels that are helping to alleviate the burden of fossil-based electricity consumption. These communities and initiatives show us how we can transform energy systems away from centralized, corporate-controlled fossil fuels and other harmful technologies, while also increasing access to electricity and creating opportunities for local economic development. But in order for these solutions to be adopted across the region and beyond, they will require additional economic, political, and popular support. Scaling these solutions will require those who have been more responsible for global warming to provide the resources for vulnerable countries to adapt and develop in response to the climate crisis. This can occur through increased climate finance, technology and capacity schemes under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and other policies and mechanisms to enable countries to enact these transformations. The time is now. A better world is possible.